Okay. It's 7 a.m. New York time. I just woke up and I just found out it's here. Procreate 5.2 out of beta and ready to rumble. Grab a coffee, break out your iPads, and let's get into it. What is up guys? Andrew here and welcome to Comic Booker. All things comics from a creator. I'm gonna do a quick intro, but if you wanna skip ahead to each new feature, I'm gonna put little chapter links in the description. Ever since I moved to New York, the art program that I've used the most by far is Procreate. I mean, I love Photoshop and Clip Studio, but when you spend half your day out in the world commuting on buses and trains, Procreate feels like it's the most ready-made for immediate portable art making. There's something to be said about its sleek, minimalist interface. It doesn't clutter up your screen with menu bars and windows. It gets out of the way and lets you get down to drawing immediately. The downside to that minimalist interface is that Procreate has a lot of features that some people never realize are there, since they're all hidden behind menus, gestures, and preferences. So every year, when Procreate does an annual update, I like to go over all the new features they have and familiarize myself with them. Let's get into it. All right, here we go. This is Procreate as it is in my current state. And we are on the 5X8 build. Now I'm gonna go to the App Store. Here we go. Update. Oh boy, these things always take forever. I'm so excited. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Ah, there it is. Okay, let's do this. Open. There's a what's new up here. Let's check that out. Ooh. And you can download a model pack, which is kind of cool. They have loaded us up with some cool sample 3D models. So the first feature, obviously, is um, 3D model painting. Not 3D modeling. I feel like that's coming eventually, but it's it's really cool like it's just like procreate you can you know pinch the zoom and do all that usual stuff but with one finger you can rotate the model now and do all sorts of cool stuff so let's see it says tap to select mesh tap to select mesh tap to select mesh oh cool okay all right uh, I'm gonna use the shader to grab a really cool color and start painting on this. That's pretty great. <laughs> and to do it, an accent color like that. It feels really intuitive. That's what I like about it. You don't have to think too hard and it does what you think it should do, which is great, you know. I really like how they make things such that it's just second nature. Like a child could figure this out really quickly. So that's 3D model painting. Uh, it says there's something to do with material brushes. So let's look at that. Materials is a whole section here. So let's try um, this black wood. I'm gonna use something crazy like that. And it seems to be like adding a bit of rust or distress to the image that's pretty cool um let's put this down there maybe it looks better if it's dark yeah it's like it, it overlays a texture it's kind of like a texture brush but i wonder i wonder what this looks like in the brush studio so let's look at zombie skin Okay, so now you can see that these material brushes have been tuned to work in a 3D space with lighting. Um, and you can see how it reacts to lighting. Uh, there's all these things here, but materials is what we're looking at. They have... Mm, they have options for metallic the metallicness of it and I guess it's going to increase the speculars and the reflectivity of it yeah look how much how, how much more it catches the light uh, and then here is the roughness and I suppose because this is zombie skin we want it to be like really gross and rough 
and change the scale. I'm sure you can change the sample as well. And I can import a photo. Uh, I have all these cool photos from Comic-Con. Let's throw this page I drew in. There we go. Done. And that should kind of add to it. Yeah, I can kind of see the drawing in there, here and there. Okay, I'm just gonna press cancel. And that's that. All right, next up is a feature uh, called Lighting Studio. And if you're in like a 3D model like this one, and we go into actions, you'll see a 3D tab over here. It shows show 2D texture, which, you know, you can paint over that. Paint through the mesh. I don't think I can do that right now. And you can edit lighting and environment. And it, it sets up all these cool lights here that you can mess with. You can make this red. Uh, increase the intensity of it, just how bright it is. To make this a cool light. Increase the saturation. And increase that. And you can see, especially here on the wheel, right? The lights I've set up are reflecting on the 3D model. So it's doing it properly. Although I will say it's kind of weird that this light here is shining through the skateboard onto the wheel. Like that's not how I think it would behave, but you know, um, there's only so much you can do. It's like it's calculating a lot of complex things at this point. It's pretty great. You can also add more lights and then move them around at will. Um, and that's pretty cool. If, if I can maybe get I don't know, maybe I should sculpt like a human model. This could be make really good reference for like, if you need like an extreme lighting situation or, you know, want to shade things properly. Um, using the 3D on this might be really helpful. And this, everything's just so flowy and intuitive. I love that. You can even change the environment. You can make this sunrise, beach, mountain. I'm not sure what that's doing. I don't see no mountains here. Maybe they just mean like the, the general color scheme of, of that environment. Daytime. So it's cool light. Savage. If you're in the savage planet of Sakaar. I'm not a big like 3D artist. Uh, I'm more of a 2D artist. So uh, these features are cool. They're nice little things to play with, but I don't really see a lot of use cases for myself, at least with this feature. The other features though, well, let's get into that. Uh, let's talk about page assist, which is the most exciting feature for me. Um, previously, I would have to, if I was gonna make like a comic, um, or a storyboard or, or just lay something out. Here's like a little Instagram comic I made um, just for online. And what I did was I had to make, um, you know, each individual page and then draw them out on separate files, which was cool, you know, um, that's pretty fine but uh, not, not as efficient or, 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 or as uh, intuitive as I would like. Uh, so now they've added something which I feel like is, is geared towards comics artists, right? Um, and it's called Page Assist. And if you go into Actions here and flip on Page Assist, suddenly you'll get this new um, tab here at the bottom, which is really cool. Basically, it makes every new layer into a page. And what's cool about this is um, you can group layers together. So I've grouped um, all the layers into one group, which is great, handy. You can treat it as if one file on its own. And then if I just press plus or press new page, uh, suddenly I have a new page. So I can be like, okay, that's the first page. And then the second one, I want to see him um, moving through a dense wood. It just becomes really easy to move through, especially if you're like in the middle of a story or in the middle of like trying to lay out the story. You can go really fast. Okay, there's page one, page two, page three. 
panel four, and so on and so forth. You get the point. Uh, and this is great because you can treat each, you know, each panel as a page. So I can see this if I format this right. Um, I can do comics panels per page, and I could read it like um, like an actual comic book as I make it and make edits live. I can just jump back and forth down here and it feels really seamless. So I can see this like being perfect uh, for someone like me who likes to make comics. Um, and if you also just are laying things out, you know, it's super easy to go into this and jump back and forth page by page. Also, what's great about it is since you can group it, right? Here I am on the last page. It retains that page info. And if I wanted to do live edits, let's say to refine this drawing, I wanna make the, whoop, I wanna make the line straighter like that. It gets really easy to go through permutations. So I think this is gonna be really handy. The cool thing about this too is when you're done, right? You have all of that. You can export it as a PDF. Good, better, best, best. And that'll just like, you know, you can just save to files. Save, save. Next up is a big quality of life improvement. They've added color cards to the palette um, menu. And you can see it up here, it's compact and then it's cards. So this is really handy because now you, you can just see the name of the color. And for me, that, that's easier to register, you know, and like what I'm doing. Let's say I needed that particular pink red to recolor this whole image. That's what it would do. And I like that you can sort of you know, when you, when you can put a name to a color, you can go back to it over and over. You can just sort of manage your color palette more thoughtfully. And now it's so funny because I didn't even know the names to some of these things and it's just throwing names on them, which is great. Next up, some cool stuff with brushes. So first off, they've done a new, they put a new menu in the brush library called Recent Brushes, which is great, especially if you're like me and you have like a, you know, a metric ton of, of brush uh, sets that you've bought or downloaded. Uh, having your most recent ones up here helps you just get to what you need super fast. Uh, on top of that, they've done a, they've added a whole section called stabilization. And, you know, before, We've we've had we've had streamline before. You know, I never really turned this up, but it makes your line much smoother and helps to compensate for jitter and stuff like that. But now they've also added a whole thing called stabilization, and it really makes for much smoother lines. Uh, it's it's actually pretty crazy how much more smooth this is. It looks almost like a vector drawing, you know? So if you need that aesthetic, I can see this being really useful for lettering, uh, especially if you're doing like really complicated, beautiful cursive and stuff like that. The stabilization is gonna be amazing. One more thing with the brushes, which, which I really like, you know, sometimes I change my line weights a lot and it's hard for me to sort of figure out how to get back to it. You know, sometimes I'm using just like two line weights like this and that. And previously I'd have to just, you know, kind of work my way through this slider here and figure things out. But now you can see a percentage, which is really helpful. Um, and on top of that, you can, you can just hit plus, let's say this is, you know, this is the line weight you want to keep. And you'll notice it keeps a little tab there, 
which is really cool. Um, let's say I needed to do little detail work here. I'm gonna do some hatching, like that. And I'm gonna hatch again later on, so I'm gonna save that. But now I wanna go back to like my contour line weight. It's super easy, just sort of work back to hatching, like that. And you'll notice as I drag up and down, it snaps into that same brush state. Super helpful. I think it's gonna be a really, really nice addition to people who like to do line artwork. They've also done some tweaks to adjustments. So here, um, let's say I had to do, here's the adjustments palette. Um, before when I used to do hue saturation brightness, um, it would always make me choose between layer and pencil. And I would always, always go for the layer option. Never really on the pencil thing, even though I thought it was a cool option. Now it just defaults to, to this and I can mess with the hue and saturation and brightness this way. It just kind of goes, uh, applies through the whole layer by default, which, which is a nice quality of life change. Let's glitch out Mr. Alex Summers here. I love this effect, I swear. It's the best thing from the 5X update. There, let's put some Kirby dots all over him. And, you know, it's just, you can see the adjustment level there, and you can also see the percentage of, you know, of the application of it. Uh, and it's really fun. The wave signal. Signal looks cool. Diverge. I'm not gonna go into every feature. Um, I realize there's more features than I could cover, but those are the big ones that I really think are gonna change the way I work. Um, especially the page assist thing. I think that's gonna be great. All right, last big feature update that I need to talk about is RAM. I'm on the 2018 iPad Pro, which has four gigabytes of RAM. But if you're on one of those newer iPad Pros with six gigabytes and up, Apple has opened up developer access to that, which means more layers, bigger canvases, and better performance overall. If you're on an M1 iPad Pro with like 16 gigabytes of RAM, it's gonna be bonkers. You can now create canvas sizes up to 16,000 by 8,000 pixels. Kinda makes me wanna upgrade my iPad now. I skipped this year's model, and now we're halfway to the release of the next model, which is usually around March, so I, I don't know. Ugh must resist until 2022. That's all for today, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe, follow me online, and do all the internet things, especially if you enjoyed this video. Your support really helps the channel out. Anyway, happy Procreate Update Day. I hope you all enjoy it as much as I will, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.